So, hey, hello everyone. I'm here today to try and convince you that 34 key keys is a totally reasonable am amount of keys to have on a keyboard, and I'm not a totally deranged individual. So, let's start. Who am I? Uh, I am Mattia Dalben. I'm from Italy. I have a master's degree in electronic engineering. I work as a software engineer at Eurotech, and I'm a keyboard addict. And I designed a few projects that are quite popular in the keyboard community, the Redux keyboard and the Yampad. I don't know if anybody of you know this. Okay. So my ego is a little bruised, but uh, not, not a problem. So what are we going to talk about? Uh, we are not going to talk about your average custom mechanical keyboard. We are going to talk about small form factor, which means less than 40 keys keyboards, ergonomic, open source, mechanical keyboards. We are going to talk about the, what firmware software features make them a viable option, features that can be applied even to normal keyboards, and above all, why should you want to use them? And by the way, in the, the, the keyboards in the bottom picture over there are all mine. Uh, yeah, I warned you, I'm a little uh, keyboard addict. addict. So what, uh, what are we going to cover? We start by talking about how we can improve the ergonomics of a 100 years old uh, design from the hardware perspective. Spoiler alert, we are going to remove a lot of keyboards, a lot of keys in the process. Then we'll talk about the software feature to make minimal keyboards viable for daily use. And also I'll uh, briefly cover the most common alternative layouts and why would you want to use them. Finally, we'll put everything together with the Miracle layout one of the most popular layout for small form factor uh, ergonomic keyboards. So, let's start with the hardware. On the top half, you can see a Corona Model 4 that was introduced around 1920. And yeah, I heard Corona stuff is pretty popular right now, so uh, uh, I try to keep up with the times. And on the bottom half, a 2020 MacBook Air. There's a century between these two, and they have a lot of, uh, in common from the keyboard design perspective. And uh, yeah, keyboard design essentially didn't change since 1880, uh, when typewriters appeared, first appeared. We are burdened by design choices due to mechanical physical constraints that are no longer exist. Nobody even questioned it, and this is dumb. Let's try and fix that. So. Let's start with uh, ulnar deviation. Ulnar deviation occurs when your wrist is bent outwards in the direction of your little fingers. It's, it is among the most common and potential, uh, potentially damaging keyboard postures and can lead to carpal tunnel syndrome and other serious repetitive strain injuries. Your wrists are not built to, be, to, to bend like that, so we can split the keyboard to have a more natural posture. Here, we can find a, uh, you can see a, a Taobao Supreme 65% split keyboard this is not open source, unfortunately, even though you can, f can easily find similar alternatives that are. I chose to use this picture only because it was pretty. And uh, as you can see, by being split, we can move the two halves around uh, however we want to, allowing us to assume a more natural posture while tapping. Another thing that uh, we can improve uh, is the fact that why is your strongest finger, the thumb, used to press only one key? Even worse, use both your thumbs to press a single key, the spacebar. It, it's a waste. Let's create a dedicated set of keys only for the thumbs. This set of keys is usually called uh, the thumb cluster, which is uh, one of the most common features uh, among the keyboard, uh, ergonomic keyboards. There are, there's no common rule for which function to dedicate to which uh, button, but usually you'll see the most used keys in the thumb cluster, like uh, space, enter, backspace, delete, tab, shift, and stuff like that. Here you can see a Digmarize uh, keyboard, which, is, which features a four key thumb cluster. Again, not open source, but it's the last one, I promise. And then, yeah, uh, we can start with the, uh, the open source stuff. The row stagger layout is a heritage from old typewriters that needed such an arrangement to fit the mechanical linkages between the keys and the levers. Such a design is not needed anymore and doesn't fit with the human hand conformation. The common alternative is to use the columnar stagger uh, keys, uh, in which uh, keys are vertically aligned and displaced following the length of the fingers. Here's, you can see, here you can see a Redox keyboard featuring a columnar uh, stagger layout. 
Uh, yeah, at this point, we, there are a lot of alternatives. The Ergodos keyboard, which inspired the design of the, of the Redox, being one, and more recently, the Kyria keyboard. All of these are open hardware and open source, obviously. We are now at the heart of this, to this talk. We'll talk about how we can reduce uh, the number of keys in the following slide, but let's focus on why this is something we want to do. Reducing finger movement means uh, uh, reducing fatigue and strain on the hands. It is more ergonomic. Reducing finger movements means also that faster typing because your finger needs to travel less distance to prevent the keys you to, to press the keys you want. Reducing finger movement means also fewer errors. You don't need to reposition your hand and thus reduce the probability to, of misplacing them uh, by mistake and making mistakes. Uh, it's also improved typing habits. I will cover that uh, later in the talk, but uh, you can't use incorrectly what doesn't exist. Uh, another fact, uh, another uh, advantage is the fact that it's more portable. I have this in my pocket. And they look adorable, but that's personal. Uh, to sum it up, essentially the idea here is that reducing the number of keys reduces the finger movement, and this has a lot of ergonomic and typing speed advantages. We'll see shortly how we can reduce the number of keys by moving our keys, uh, by moving our keys to the fingers and not the other way around. Here's a Corne keyboard by Fustan. It features everything we just talked about. It's a split keyboard, it's a, it has a thumb cluster, and feature column, columnar stagger, all within 36 keyboard keys. We are now in minimal uh, territory, or small farm factor territory. So there are further improvements we can make, for example, pronation in the forearm, and the wrist occurs when typing with your palms facing down towards the work, safe, work surface. The majority of this turning involves the rotation of both forearm, forearm bones. Uh, sustained pronation puts pressure on the forearm muscle and tissues, which reduce, uh, uh, reduces blood circulation and can lead to fatigue and repetitive strain injuries. This can be avoided by elevating the, uh, the thumb side of the, key, the, of the hand. Furthermore, adding concave key, concave key wells ensure the keys are reachable and mimic the curve drawn by our fingers. Here you can see a skeleton from Buster Keyboard. It uh, features both a concave key well and tilting. Again, this project is completely open source and the case is 3D printable. All files are provided by the author so that can, you can print it yourself. We have now seen what we want to achieve and why. Let's talk about how we can do this. Keyboard firmware is the software running on the microcontroller responsible for scanning the matrix state and reporting which keys are being pressed to the operating system. In the keyboard enthusiast space, we have uh, mainly two projects for this, QMK, Quantum Mechanical Keyboard Firmware, maybe you, some of you may know, ma might know it, which is a mature project and the de facto standard for custom keyboards with a lively ecosystem of sub-projects. And then there's uh, ZMK, Zephyr Mechanical Keyboard Firmware, which is relatively new, but already fairly mature and my personal favorite. Its killer feature is the Bluetooth support for uh, which KMK uh, can't offer due to licensing, licensing issues. There are other KMK, TMK, and uh, others with uh, their own merits, but I'll not, that dis I'll not discuss them right now. Also, fun fact, yeah, Zephyr is that Zephyr, the Eclipse Foundation uh, uh, project. With those tools, uh, with these tools, we can program much more smart behavior in our keyboards. Some of you might be familiar with the concept of macros. Uh, maybe remapping keys in more comfortable places with the, the need to configure, without the need to configure every OS you connect to. The, the, the caps lock doesn't deserve the place it has on the keyboard, in my opinion. Uh, there are much more uh, useful behavior, uh, though, uh, that we'll discuss now. You, you should uh, be able to find this feature in each of the previously mentioned firmwares. So let's start with the bread and butter of uh, custom mechanical keyboards, which are layers. This amounts to changing the behavior of a key by pressing another key. You might be familiar with the function key on some uh, FN key on some laptops, which turns the function row in a brightness control or media control row. This is essentially it. It's a safe spacing, spa a safe, uh, saving uh, space saving measure. As you can see here in the animation, we have a dedicated key for activating the layer one layer. When pressed, it changes the behavior of the, of the W key and it turns in an in a eight key. So what if instead of reaching for the, this is 
another another behavior that we can have is um, what if instead of reaching for a shift key, we could just keep the key pressed and a, a little bit longer to get the uppercase version of it? This, this technique is called auto shift and leverages the hold tap behavior, as you can see in the animation here. The hold tap key uh, will, op will output the hold behavior if it's held for a while. Uh, in the animation here is the, the uppercase A. They are, and output the tap behavior when it's tapped quickly, the lowercase A here. Let's take this concept a little farther. What if we remove the need for modifier keys by using the hold tap technique? If you think about it, it is, it is the perfect application. Modifier keys, like Control, Alt, Command, are rarely pressed by themselves. You need to keep them pressed. They are modifiers, after all. In the animation here, the F key doubles as a shift key. It, or, it normally outputs the F character when tapped. It becomes a shift modifier when held. We can now put them anywhere we want without the need for dedicated keys. So let's put them where we don't need for reach, uh, to, to reach for them, on the home row. Think about moving away from the home row as a cache miss. You incur in a higher latency when trying to write something that needs keys not on the home row. Modifiers are used uh, pretty frequently, uh, so moving them where they are easier to reach is a no-brainer. I mean, we built our careers on Control C, Control V. We should know, right? These also have a big ergonomic advantage. You don't need to place your fingers awkwardly to press common shortcut. Everything is more comfort comfortably reachable. We talk about layers. The key for switching layer is another good target for the hold tap behavior. It's pretty much identical to the modifier in the sense that they are rarely pressed by themselves. This creates a lot more room from placing these kind of keys on the keyboard. You don't need a dedicated key for layer switching anymore, and you can place it wherever you want. Here you can see uh, the, the Q key is, uh, doubles as a uh, layer toggle. When, when, keep, when kept pressed, it will uh, trigger the layer change. When tapped, it simply outputs the Q key, the Q, key, the Q character. Finally, a more, recent a more recent feature, which are combos. What if, instead of needing a dedicated caps lock, caps lock button, you could just press the two shift keys together? Again, less keys. In the animation here, Q and W uh, behave as you would expect when pressed by themselves. But when pressed together, they will output the escape key. Keep in mind that all the behavior we've just seen can be combined together. You can have a combo that triggers a layer using a whole, the, the, the old tab behavior. These are the building blocks for the advanced, advanced, advanced layout that we'll, see, uh, that we'll see later. And there's uh, a lot more th than this that you can achieve with this kind of firmware. Some of you might, might be familiar with the leader key by using Vim. Think about having it everywhere. Caps Word is another nice feature. It's a smart caps lock. It de deactivates on its own when a certain character is pressed, like the space key. And yeah, I invite you to take a look at the, the documentation from QMK and ZMK to understand what these firmwares are capable of. So no talk uh, about keyboards will be complete without talking about QWERTY layout. Unfortunately, I'm not that knowledgeable on alternative layout, so I'll cover just the basics. So, what's wrong with QWERTY? Why was it designed this way? First, let's address a common misconception. Allegedly, the QWERTY layout was designed to slow down fast typists to avoid the typewriter to jam. During the, the research for my talk, I discovered that this fact was actually debunked by a group of Japanese researchers, and that the QWERTY design stems from the use of the typewriter by telegraph operators, which were the first users of this new technology. For instance, at the time, they used to use the letter I to write the number 1. As you can see here in the Corona Model 4, there's the one missing, the, the one key is missing to, because of this. And they decided to move it near the 8 to write the date faster, 1870, and uh, yeah. So, likewise, the, they put the S, the S, the Z, and the E together because they usually got confused in the American Morse code. And that, that was the decision that uh, yeah, brought us this, this, uh, this, this layout. Frankly speaking, I don't think the explanation of how this layout was designed got better. 
in the end, we are still using something that was designed for uh, the needs of the 19th century. Can we do better? Indeed, we can. An attempt to propose a better layout for writing was done by August Dvorak in 1936. The Dvorak layout you can see here. The, the principle is simple. Uh, the most common character used in the English vocabulary are easy, the, the easiest to reach. Look at the vowels on the home row. It was designed from the start with ergonomics in mind, and its proponents claims that it requires less finger movements, movements again, and as a, reduce, er, as a result, uh, reduces error, increases typing speed, and reduces repetitive state injuries. During my research, I found this paper, uh, which, were, which uh, compares various keyboard layouts, and indeed, the claim seems to be true, although maybe not as dramatic as you might expect. The issue here is that the perceived gain, uh, which is a 5% speed increase and objectively a, a difficultly to measure ergonomic gain, didn't convince the general public to make, to make the switch. And the layout is uh, yeah, still uh, quite exotic. So, uh, m more recently, uh, mm, Shai Coleman in 2006 introduced the Colemac layout, which tried to address the issues with the Dvorak layout, preserving its efficiency and design principle, but trying to lower the barrier of entry for people coming from the QWERTY layout. This is the most, the most common al alternative layout suggested today. A more recent variant, which is Colemac Mod DH, is the most popular and uh, suggested for, new, for newcomers. Personally, I'm, I'm still on the fence about it, but yeah. Finally, uh, here we are with the Miracle layout. We have now covered all the features and techniques that can improve our keyboards. Let's put them all together. Let's play a little game. Let's try and fit all the keys on our outdated and ugly full-size keyboard onto this super cute ergonomic split 34 key keyboard right here. As you can see, the hardware ticks all the boxes. It's split, it's a thumb cluster, it, provides a, it features a thumb cluster, a columnar stagger, and the, the, just the right amount of keys. We need all the software feature we'll talk about before to make everything fit. Let's start with the basics. Simple characters are where we expect them to be. So here we have the, the base layer. We talk about the fact that we should use our thumbs more. Let's assign them the most used keys, space, backspace, return, and tab. Ask and delete are accessible through combos. By pressing the two left thumb keys, we'll have the escape key. By doing the same on the right, we will have the delete key. Furthermore, we'll need uh, layers to fit everything into this keyboard. Thumbs will be responsible for all the layer switching, thanks to layer top, which the, the layer top we just talked about. So. Um, to cover the mods, we'll simply use the home row mods we talked about in the previous slides. As you can see, we are already covered a large part of the keys from the full size keyboard, and we, we didn't even use a layerlet yet. So, let's start using our layers. Let's start by putting the numbers, numbers on the left hand in a numpad layout, so that it's easier to re easy to remember. To access symbols, we can simply press shift while st uh, staying on the num layer, or access uh, a shortcut layer called the symbol layer, which is on the other uh, right thumb key. This layer is accessible by pressing, yeah, the, the other right hand thumb key. Symbols are the same as reported in the num row, which means that you'll find the dollar sign above the four key, so nothing has changed from a normal keyboard, nothing new to learn apart from the position of, uh, of the other seven symbols here uh, I have highlighted on the, on the blank keys. Following the same principle, uh, let's put the function key in the same spot as the number layer, in a layer on its own. This means that we'll find the F1 key where the one key was found on the other layer, so that it's easy to remember. So we already know where most of our keys are located. Our right hand, uh, on our right hand, let's put our nav cluster and the arrow keys. If you prefer the usual inverted T layout for arrows, there's an option for that. And uh, just like that, as you can see, all the keys from a normal keyboard are covered. But can we, we can do much more than that. Here we are. This is the principle behind the Miracle Layout by Mana Harbor, one of the most common uh, for minimal keyboards. 
As you can see, it, spikes, it, it packs uh, quite a lot more features than what I've covered. It has a media layer for controlling volume, media, and Bluetooth settings, a mouse emulation layer, some copy-paste shortcut for one-handed use, and it's in its default config configuration, uh, it uses uh, the Colemac layout, but supports QWERTY, Dvorak, and others out of the box. I invite you to give a look at the uh, documentation provided by in the official repo. Here is the link. And everything is open source, obviously. So let's get to our conclusion then. Finally, this is my current daily driver. I also have another one here, because why not? Having more is, ma is better. And um, this is my current daily driver, which is a ferry sweep half swept running Miriocus ZMK. Yeah, everything I just uh, mentioned is open source, obviously. Yeah, and I, I like it a lot. So why uh, I liked it a lot? I've always used pinkies incorrectly, especially for pressing, this, uh, for pressing the shift key, which made them hard after a day of work. With the Miracle layout, I'm forced to use my index, index fingers and to alternate between them, uh, which is the correct way of doing it. Uh, I also used, the, uh, used to press the spacebar with my index finger. This keyboard made me drop all of these bad habits. The, the limitation of, this, key of uh, this keyboard made me discover new ways of typing. I can keep uh, the backspace pressed. Actually, I can by double tapping it, but it's uncomfortable. Um, to delete a word uh, if I need to, uh, but I can. Uh, I discovered uh, by this limitation that I can actually do um, the. I, ca I can use the Alt backspace or the Command backspace backspace combination, which improved my typing habits again and my speed for deleting uh, words and uh, entire lines. Uh, due to home row modes placement, shortcuts are so much easier to type. For worldwide navigation, I use op uh, option arrows to move around. Doing so on a normal keyboard uh, will move both my hands away from the home row, and that introduces further uh, speed, drops, uh, speed drops and possible mistakes. And this is true for a lot of shortcuts. Accessing symbols is much easier now, since I no longer need to reposition my hands, and thus I'm using Ving commands that depend on these uh, symbols much more frequently now. I've yet to encounter a key combination that I cannot type, which is fairly remarkable. And it, it, it's plain fun to use, really. So finally, I hope I convinced you that uh, minimal ergonomic keyboards are not just a novelty, but offer some serious ergonomic advantages that make them viable, if not preferable, to normal keyboards. And uh, techniques and layout that I showed you can benefit all keyboards. The Miriocle layout was implemented also on Kmonad, which may be familiar to some of you, which works on any kind of keyboards. Give it a try. But some of you might be thinking, is 34 keys the limit? Can we go farther than that? Actually, we can. We can, yeah. So the top keyboard is a 18-key Ergogen-generated PCB. Uh, Ergogen is a pro an, uh, an open source project which will deserve a, uh, a talk on its own. It's, it's used to generate uh, PCBs for ergonomic keyboards. And it's, uh, it's running the EAS e ISRT layout. The owner says it can reach uh, 60 words per minute, which is an above average speed. And the bottom keyboard is a 10 key Gini uh, keyboard uh, using the AZ Neop layout. This is obviously our final goal. So, yeah. Do you have any questions? Yes. Uh, let's say um, I, uh, I introduce uh, the keyboard to, to my software developers and mm. they are very enthusiastic with, uh, with this new uh, layout. Uh, how long do, do they need to learn? Oh, okay. Yeah. To that's productive in a, how long uh, does it take? <laughs> it varies. Uh, it depends on how much you're, you, you, you need to um, relearn, uh, re retrain your muscle memory. This is the hard part. It took me, I think, the first time that I switched to a, a split keyboard, maybe two weeks, three weeks, full time, uh, writing it, and then uh, I was able to, to, to switch properly. Yeah, it, it's, it's uh, quite a steep uh, learning curve. 
but yeah, it fixed me. Uh, it fixed a, a lot of my issues with uh, normal keyboards. It's a lot of bad habits. I think it's worth it, but yeah, <laughs> your mileage may, va may vary. Yeah. I, I guess you, you have to want it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. You? Uh, just a quick question. Is there any open source hardware and firmware which has such keyboard with LED screen? Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, the, the corner keyboard is available with, uh, it has uh, screens, OLED screen support and uh, LED support. This one, I think LED support, yes. You cannot uh, add, yeah, I mean, you can add an OLED screen, but it's not supported through the PCB. Uh, the, corner, uh, the corner keyboard is uh, open source. I think, uh, I'm sorry, I have to correct myself. This one, the latest version, which is, which is the Ferris Half Sweat uh, Bling edition, something like that, does support the OLED screen. Uh, all open source. You can grab the Gerber files from the GitHub repo of the Ferris keyboard and just upload them on uh, on, on a PCB manufacturer site and receive your, key, your PCB at your, at your house. Or there are also uh, vendors that uh, provide you with the uh, kits that uh, contains everything, microcontrollers and uh, LEDs and stuff for building on your own. You had uh, At any arbitrary time in your experience or switching to split or a custom ergonomic keyboard? I'm sorry, at, uh, I lost the, the first part. <laughs> Um, actually, uh, with the Miracle layout, not so much, because it provides out of the box a lot of the main configuration that you will need. I didn't customize too much. I tried to stick with the, the, the um, default Miroc Miroku. Okay, I, 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 I use uh, the QWERTY layout, which is not a default, but not, not so much time. Also, you have to keep in mind that the, using ZMK, you don't need to have your the, the tool chain on your PC. You, uh, it runs on a uh, GitHub uh, um, workflow. So you just press a button and you receive the, 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 the file that you need to upload on the, on the key. So it's really, really quick to do. I, it's, it's, um, yeah, in, uh, it's a rabbit hole. You can go really, really yeah, into custom things. Uh, yeah, so. It, yes. Uh, mm, uh, the, uh, so, as I said, the Miryoko can run on uh, OEM uh, uh, keyboards also. Like there's, uh, I think, uh, something for the Moonlander or stuff like that. Anything that can run QMK can also run uh, the Miryoko. And also there's also the Kmonad uh, option that I mentioned, which is a simple software that in uh, intercepts the, the, the keystrokes at the OS level, so it's, it's, uh, it should work with any, any kind of keyboard. Uh, yeah, otherwise, yeah, OEM stuff, it's, it has too, ma too many keys, in my opinion, but yeah, for Moonlander, uh, Ergodox, Easy, these are, the, these are um, uh, you can buy them uh, in a single package, let's say. Any other questions? Yeah. Greg? <laughs> I have read on uh, Reddit, but you know, you, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, some people uh, say that it improved their, their RSI. They, they felt the improvement with the switching to split keyboards mainly, or yeah, with the uh, yeah, tilting mechanism also helps a lot. But yeah, I, uh, it's just, there's no study that I can uh, uh, provide you with, uh, so. Yes? You still have to switch between the mouse and the keyboard. Did you think about moving the mouse with the one hand and typing yeah. with the other hand? So I am um, a big fan of uh, Vim and NeoVim. So full, uh, the, the mouse is, is, is bad for me, so yeah. And also, when I was on Linux systems, I used uh, i3, Windows Manager, so full, uh, again, full keyboard uh, use. Uh, 
yeah, I, I'm, I'm weird, like, I know. Uh, I'm the weird guy at my company, so <laughs> as you might imagine. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, an, old, uh, an old ecosystem that uh, you, you try to, to, to have, to, to move away from the mouse. Any other questions? Yes. No, no, because, yeah, uh, as you may imagine, the, um, the S key is the option key. So I can, yeah, I can. Uh, people that uh, game with, their, with the, this kind of keyboards have a dedicated gaming, gaming layer. So uh, you switch to that, in, uh, not in a, um, so they toggle it uh, with a key. And then it stays with the, 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 the usual, uh, the, 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 the behavior that you expect, essentially. Which the, there's an additional bef benefit with using this kind of keyboard because you can throw away the, the right hand and you have a lot of space for your, uh, for your mouse for, for shooting for FPS games. It's, uh, yeah, it has a lot of advantages. I convinced you, so yeah. I, I see a lot of convinced uh, faces. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Any other question? Uh, yes. Is it possible to buy that uh, already assembled? I'll, um, there are a few vendors. I th uh, you can find something on Etsy, maybe. There are also uh, people that provide uh, uh, assembly services. People that will uh, buy, th I don't know if they also buy, but I think they buy uh, things for you and then solder the things together. There are also lately a lot of kits are uh, hot swappable, so you can you don't need to solder them, uh, solder stuff on these kind of keyboards like the the bl the, the bling uh, half swap bling version of this keyboard I mentioned before should come with uh, a hot swap uh, um, sockets for the for the um, for the switches, but you you still need to solder the the hot swap so socket. So I think there are a lot of services. Maybe not not big enough. You need to go to Etsy and uh, this kind of stuff. Yes. Uh, do you have uh, an ergonomic opinion about uh, mechanical versus rubber zone keys? Uh, I don't. I have a, a big preference for mechanical, but that's just personal opinion. No, but, um, on in all seriousness, no. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't know about uh, that. I think that. Um, Rubber domes should provide a much, uh, more uh, cushioned bottom out. That is something that can be brought up. Uh, this can be compensated on high-end uh, um, mechanical keyboards by the use of a uh, gasket mount and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, these kind of keyboards usually don't have uh, a gasket mount because it, it, you, you can fit it uh, on, on this form factor. So yeah. Any more keyboards? Uh, keyboards? No, not keyboards. Questions? <laughs> so that's that's all for me. Uh, thank you for attending. So I just put here some credits. This uh, presentation is, av is available through my GitHub, which will uh, is linked in my bio on the on the application. And yeah, thank you. And that's it. Thanks. <laughs>